you have probably come across the familiar side of spinning 3D globe model enhanced with lively animations and a lot of information running around it on, on top of it. Such visuals are often showcased in sci-fi movies, news channels, backgrounds, other media in background or in HUD interfaces etc. Now let's try and create this animated globe using Blender 3D in a pretty straightforward process achievable easily with geometry nodes. Now I've used this process to create a similar example for a client project recently which you can see on the screen and rest assured this tutorial is sort of beginner friendly provided you are familiar with the basics. So let's dive in and get started with this exciting tutorial. This is Ram from Crossmind Studio and welcome back to another geometry nodes tutorial. So let's dive in. So let's jump to Blender and I'm using Blender 3.5 here and um, yeah first thing let's make some room for ourselves here. Let's get rid of these things and I'm going to bring one UV sphere right in the middle. Now from the UV sphere menu let's increase these uh, rows and columns, rings and segments. So I just want sort of dense mesh. So let's make it 150, 100, yeah this is fine. So now let's bring one geometry node editor here and get rid of these unnecessary things for now. Things that we don't want, gizmo we don't want here and maybe we can um, try and make viewport more darker and madcap. Yeah this is much better view. So I'm going to bring a new node network and I'm using geometry nodes here. This is geometry node editor. So first thing first, what I want here is this map to be sort of made of hexagons. So for that, the node we need is uh, triangulate. So just type triangulate here and uh, this is going to sort of create these diagonal lines. Now after this, once you bring a dual mesh node, which is uh, in the mesh section here. I think uh, somewhere here, dual mesh and triangulate both of these. So now you'll see these hexagon shapes. In most of the example, this is the only good use I've seen of this node. Now after this, what we need is delete geometry node. So let's bring a delete geometry node. And in this, let's select faces. So basically what we want to delete out of these uh, faces let's bring one image texture and in this image texture I'm going to open vector map it's basically a PNG format thing and I'm going to plug this alpha value in uh, in the selection so you can see something is happening here it's sort of uh, deleting things based on uh, texture but the texture is not quite mapped yet according to UV so for that we are just going to type uh, named attribute and in this we want our UV map which is uh, right here in this sphere when you create a basic primitive you have these basic UVs laid out by default so this UV map we are going to bring here and plug this into vector so now this is sort of uh, looks much more aligned let me just enable shadows maybe yeah much better but we want to reverse the effect of this so you can uh, color ramp this and flip these numbers uh, these points so yeah we have a good start and uh, one thing I feel is these hexagons could be slightly more finer so maybe I can subdivide this mesh here so we have our map and uh, now only thing I'm going to do here is uh, split edges split edges and place it uh, right after the delete geometry node right here and now you can bring a scale element so basically now once we split these edges so all of these hexagons are sort of uh, uh, these split apart so once you scale these you can see every individual hexagon is scaling this is no longer one mesh so if i mute this you can see what's happening all right 
so this i'm doing here uh, just to add sort of a slight animation going on in this instead of uh, using this fat number in uh, scale element i'm going to use uh, this musgrave texture and make this one 40. so scale this down and you can see now you have these uh, varying driven with this musgrave texture so every every single one of these hexagon is uh, carrying a different value and the scale is sort of shifting up and down and you can uh, control this further with map range like this now what i want here is this to be a continuous animation basically keeps on running so i can bring one scene time node and plug the frame right here in w the time so it's way too fast so i'm going to bring one math node and set this to multiply and maybe set this to 0 0.02 speed now you can see these things scaling up and down and creating this nice animation now you can keep on tweaking these numbers and uh, decide the kind of look you're going for so for now i'm going to leave it as it is uh, one more thing actually i would like to do here is extrude mesh so instead of uh, this flat surface what if we extrude this and sort of use the same value in uh, the offset value right here so we have this breathing animation going on but this is way too much for for our need so we can we can tone this down and so we have two animations now one is these hexagons scaling up and down and uh, then this extrusion sort of increasing and decreasing <coughs> the height of these hexagons so in itself it's not going to look much when but when all of these come together it's going to sort of create a lively animation so you have to pardon the noise in the background sorry about that so one of the section is complete congratulations so i'm just going to press ctrl j and frame this one and uh, let's keep sorting this out mm. map animation let's uh, color this one green because this is sort of a land all right now let's work on other things now let's add another layer um, of animation in this so i'm going to take uh, this geometry dual mesh delete geometry yeah so i'm going to take this dual mesh geometry and uh, take this right here and bring one delete geometry node again so basically what i want to do is take the exact same thing sorry about that yeah copy paste the exact same thing and plug this right here and i'm going to bring one join geometry node plug this right here so let's plug this right here and uh, now we have uh, basically what we want to do is sort of select the invert area so let's flip this we have this uh, negative area that we deleted here so on this i'm going to distribute a few points distribute points on faces and uh, these could be 50 points and on this i'm going to bring instances on uh, points and uh, one curve line which is going to be instanced on top of this now let's shift alt click right here to preview this so we have these lines so these are not visible in viewport because none of this is a geometry so we want these lines to be pointing outwards in the direct direction of the normal so for that you, let's try and use this rotation yeah this is fine so you can use the rotation and plug that in instances rotation one more thing uh, we can do here is this animation that we used musgrave texture we can copy this and paste this right here and uh, use this in scale yeah scale of these instances 
if you want you can um, maybe make a group out of this so that you can use the same animation on everything but for now let's uh, leave it uh, separate I'm going to tone this down a little the height of these things with map range so slowly uh, this whole thing is starting to breathe and uh, this looks much more lively now let's hide this one and sort out the space a little more and uh, now one more thing i would like to do here is let's bring a joint geometry node on in these lines we are going to add another geometry basically we are going to instance a few more points on top of these lines that we made here right here and these points will be icosphere and we are going to use endpoint selection in the selection area and let's remove the start and reduce the radius of these points so that just the endpoints have these uh, these pins the head of the pin basically what i'm trying to do here is add sort of a visual for showing a magnitude of an event it could be anything let's say if you have a certain information which you want to project on top of this sphere you can plug that on these pins so maybe where, wherever it's more crowded the pins are going up wherever or maybe it's if it's earthquake or something wherever the magnitude is less so these pins are going down so right now we are using a pretty simple musgrave texture but you can use any other information you want so now these uh, are uh, pin heads and but these lines need some geometry so curve to mesh so for these lines curve to mesh and uh, for the profile curve we are going to add one curve circle and reduce the radius this could be just eight segments or in fact four segments because these are going to be really really thin lines 0 0.01 and then we have uh, uh, these pins there you go so if you don't want these pins pointing inwards what you can do is this musgrave texture this map range you have you can just enable clamp so any values which are going below zero those are going to disappear so let's sort this out select all of these press ctrl j come on so let's select this color so these pins could be showing magnitude and this could be color red and we can name this one magnitude pins so congratulations we have uh, two layers and then we can select the main geometry and plug that into joint geometry node and uh, shade this set shade smooth the main bottom surface we can actually transform this slightly scale could be 0.993 yeah there you go so now comes the interesting part let me just hide this one so now what we're going to make here is basically some lines traveling from one point to the other point and uh, these are sort of signals um, there are signals traveling on these lines so pretty typical example so for that let's take our group input and on this if you can guess distribute point on distribute point on faces shift alt click to visualize this and i think uh, yeah these many points are fine uh density is fine this is fine so on this we are going to bring one instances on points and since we want lines to travel curve line plug this right here and rotation goes into rotation so that we have these lines pointing outwards so these are the lines that are going to travel from one point to other but now we need to create some points to sort of set position 
to where to travel these points to where to send these signals uh, signals to so let's create a duplicate of this distribute point on um, on faces with shift control d so that you have this connection intact and this i'm going to reduce uh, the density we just want a few points on this all right and then now let's come back to the main lines we are going to realize these instances so we can set position of these points set position and then basically we want to send these lines somewhere the end of these lines so start we don't want any starting points we we want these routes to stay where they are and only the top parts to travel to other sides so this is fine now we want these lines to travel where these points are for this to work what we can do is geometry proximity we can take geometry proximity and plug this right here on these points and now the position data that comes out of it you can plug that in the position data of uh, these points so at this moment this is not working because here we need to select points there you go so quite easy this one so now that we have these points um, reaching their destination what we can do is uh, we can change these lines from flat lines to curved lines like these so for that let's set spline type to bezier curve and uh, so now that these are curves so all of these lines have this handle you know when you create a curve geometry you have these handles these handles right here so these control points these handles so even though these are there in this these are not visible but you can access these so set set handle position so left handle and right handle so how do you want to position these handles so for that um if you think about it you have these this sphere underneath it so if you have these lines basically what we want is these lines these handles which are like this flat to point in the direction of the normal so if these are the normal direct and this is the normal direction of these handles so if we can uh, take a hint from this and if we can uh, rotate these handles in the direction of the normal then this curve is going to be like this all right so that's what we want so we need some normals uh, for that what we can do is uh, because we have lost the the original geometry which which is way too far behind from on this we scattered some points then we had these lines lines this this so we don't have any normal information at this moment so what we need to do is take hint of normal from some from the previous state or maybe any other geometry so since this is sphere we can bring a normal input change this to vector because normal is a vector value and you can take a hint from this this is a blue blue thing and a face yeah normals are always on faces not on points so now this output is carrying normal information of this sphere now as soon as i take this and plug this in uh, position of this and sorry this sorry i think from a position if we move this to offset yeah this this much better so you can see these lines start start to curve what i think is even though these are pointing outwards we can still sort of exaggerate this vector math so this normal input that we have here i'm just going to multiply this with a value of point point yeah so without this this was like way too much of curve so we just dialed this down a little like this so don't get too confused and uh, if you take step by step everything this is child's play if you've seen previous examples and uh, followed the 
geometry node series in the right order and uh, we have these lines now all we need to do is create a geometry first let's uh, create set the resolution of uh, this spline Res set spline resolution to something hard and uh, set curve to mesh curve to mesh uh, circle eight segments and radius there you go C05. So slowly building up, and I think more or less we have everything we need. We just need to make few signals, and I hope this has been easy to follow along. And yes, one more thing: uh, if you want these lines to sort of taper the farther these travel, what you can do is set spline, set curve radius, and put this right before sorry put this right before curve to mesh and uh, then you can bring spline spline parameter where is yeah and use length in radius that's it so now if you control click on this yeah if you uh, want to visualize what spline parameter means basically shift and control click on uh, any of these you want to visualize and then shift control click on geometry that you want to visualize on shift control click here and then shift control click on geometry there you go let's bring one trim curve node and put this right before curve to mesh so basically this we can use to sort of animate these curves and in this musgrave texture we can plug uh, let me just hide this musgrave texture in uh, and then you can map reach this so you can sort of uh, animate this value all right let me just create a key for this press i and uh, You can slow this down if you want there you go control j and i'm just going to name this one lines and this is sort of our digital signal so let's make it blue one more thing on these lines we want some uh, sort of signals traveling so to create these signals what we need is few points uh, these could be anywhere uh, it doesn't matter so just bring one grid and on this grid we can bring uh, distribute points and faces come on how do how do i detach it from frame anyways distribute points on faces and uh, these could be uh, this many number of uh, points and uh, then instances on points icosphere plug that here reduce the radius subdivision two so that we have smoother points set shade smooth now what we want to do is set position of these points position these points on these curves so for that what you can do is uh, yeah set position and then what we can do is uh, we need information from this curve not the mesh before the mesh this curve so if we take this curve and uh, sample this curve sample the position of this curve and plug that in uh, in the position of the set position node let's join this in join geometry node so that we can uh, see what's going on here yeah for now i'm just going to detach these so our point uh, our points did snap on these uh, these lines i believe all all the points are here stacking on top of each other but what we need is we need these points at random random places on these curve so if you scroll this number the factor first of all use uh, all curves now 
it's going to use all of these curves instead of just one of the curve so now you can see this point is sort of traveling on all the curves but all of these points are traveling i mean uh, same following the same position so if we bring one random value node and plug that into the factor now these are randomly placed so which is good point so five yeah so let's bring one scene time node and uh, plug the frame in minimum yeah so we can uh, basically animate these numbers to sort of create a traveling animation so what if i plug this here i think yeah so from zero to one so as soon as uh, this reaches frame number one the animation sort of uh, completes so so animation is happening but it's happening so fast that we can't can't really see it it just ended in one frame so don't worry we can bring one math node and uh, slow this down to 0 0.002 there you go and uh, i think if we take an input right after the trim curve node then uh, this this should be these should appear only when the lines appear so not the most accurate animation but it's fine so i'm not good with vector math and i'm not even going to try it but this works and uh, for whatever little logic that we have applied here i'm satisfied with this and then let's so so more or less this animation is there and uh, now last thing i would like to do here is uh hold on. yeah a few small things simple one but these are going to add a little more um, life into this so first thing these points that we made for signals these are sort of uh, these lines uh, these areas this this and this so we can take the these points and uh, instances on points and then on this we can make one cylinder yeah and the rotation could be coming from the points so increase the segments reduce the radius reduce the depth and the scale could be grave texture 4d scene time plug this in uh, animation set the animation to slower speed yeah and you can map range this whole thing so basically wherever these lines are emitting from in those areas we have these circles sort of uh, these are like marked areas or you can even uh, make pins on top of this if you have a pin geometry you can plug these here so that would be a good visual so we have these uh, areas and almost done i know i've been saying it's almost done but now it's like really we are literally done so areas just one last thing i would like to do here is now you have all of these uh animations going on one is for the map one is for the magnitude of event and then one is the signal traveling from here and there so all sort of animations going on but what if you wanted to sort of have a representation of density of something so like i was saying uh, uh, you can use uh, input information if you have a video or texture or something or numbers so let's take the same thing uh, this and uh, distribute point on faces so this would be for density and in this we are going to bring one image texture for the density and uh, one attribute named attribute could be uv map 
that we have on sphere exactly the same thing that we did for the map now i have two textures here one is a flat map that we used for uh, for deleting the geometry and creating the map and the other map right here is uh, a density map so let me just size modified large so here you can see some black and white painted on top of the this map so you can easily find it or i'm just going to leave these maps in description so now i'm just going to bring one max node and maybe multiply this quite some number set point radius so yeah i can see map of india here africa so points are the density map is working fine but i think i can tweak this further or the other thing you can do is uh, here is uh, uh, you can basically create instances on points icosphere set radius to point 2 or something and then use the same value in the scale of these instances sorry let's use the original value from the map there you go you can use emission map on this and you can keep on tweaking this further one more thing if you want you can um, you can bring a musgrave texture and set this to 40 bring scene time do the same thing the animation slow this down and uh, what if we use this in combination with the map so 102 0.002 yeah so this musgrave texture uh, combined with this you can use a mix node there you go so it's not really noticeable the the whole animation but the, all these subtle animations combined are going to add a lot when you play a whole this this whole thing together yeah so that's it we are done and uh, let's combine this with the frame control j and these are this is population density and uh, if you want if you're sort of uh, creating this uh, sci-fi animation what you can do is take this entire sphere distribute points on faces combine this with original geometry and uh, create sort of a transform this whole thing scale this up then you can set point radius and simply bring one script texture copy this animation paste it here you know i uh, i might have wasted a lot of time creating th these animations manually but i'm always like um, thinking maybe what if i have to uh, create a variation in animation but more or less we have used this uh, the same animation for everything so you could have i could have just control g this whole thing and uh, we made a group out of this and use the same animation everywhere but it's not much of a problem but you can save some time so set point radius map range there you go so you have this sci-fi shield running around protecting this earth that's it and now we are done
there you go just combine this name this one shield there you go so we are going to set materials on uh, all of these networks so we have uh, one two three four five six seven eight so we sort of need uh, about six or eight materials so first thing let me just go to the material section and uh, create six or seven slots all right so for materials i have already uh, made a few materials here and i'm just going to give you an overview of what's going on these are absolute basic materials so first thing first i would like to do here is change this to cycles and i will stop talking when applying materials and previewing this whole thing because the audio cracks let's set this to gpu denoiser so about 64 samples and uh, yeah so this graph looks quite cluttered what i can do here is see if there's a way to sort this out so i'm just going to cut all of these wires and plug these again in correct order for this to sort of look more come on yeah I'm pretty sure there's a shortcut of fixing this set material and uh, apply material to all of these connections exactly what we discussed in chapter number four there you go so so this one right here is a signal so I'm just going to choose the material of signal this right here is coming from uh, lines so lines right here this right here is coming from uh, from areas so these little circles so i think uh, these are going to be area circles this right here is connected to the base mesh this surface bottom surface this i'm pretty sure is the main map with the green one map surface and uh, this one is uh, density so this could be i think uh, yeah for now let's let's just set it to signal let's see and uh, this right here is uh, magnitude pins pins and uh, set material of these things shield shield is going to be yeah it could be just shield so s x to scale these in x axis s y yeah so just distributing it like this and i swear now it's done look at this Look at this pretty visual. can't really see the shield here so i think i need to increase this number so two there you go so that's it we are done and uh, with exact same method i have made uh, the preview file that you've seen uh, the rendered animation so let me just bring this render animation file so this file is quite messed up i haven't really cleaned it up but it's exactly the same thing all the same materials going on here so i rendered this in uh, on 64 samples as well 19201080 and using cycles if you want you can use uh, ev as well i'm pretty sure it's going to work with ev so that's about it here's the final animation preview and uh, it's made with exact same method and uh, here's the preview from other project in which i use the exactly same thing even the, and uh, the good part about this whole thing is uh, it's not that it's complex or anything 
it's actually a fairly simple project with combination with uh by combining so many different simple animations you can sort of create these hud animations uh, that you can use in sci-fi projects or infographic projects so there are many possibilities these were not possible before in blender if it was possible then the the process was not so straightforward so don't you get intimidated from uh, uh, by looking at this graph how big it is just look at it from uh, just get into these uh, subsections and uh, take one thing at, at a time the good part is all of this is procedural and uh, you can you can keep on exploring it you can keep on making variations out of it thank you for tuning in and any of you interested in project files the links are in description if you're new to geometry node check out the geometry node this playlist from beginning to end uh, there is no end it's still going on and this will go on because geometry node is a big project and it will keep on improving keep on uh, developing in future so yeah maybe next will be simulation notes or something but i'm studying it myself so i'm not quite there yet and uh, if you're new to blender try out the beginners series jump to discord for the monthly activities and uh, i'll see you guys in the next chapter thank you take care bye bye